So that was a little snippet of what we'll be making today. Hope it came out okay, because I haven't actually shot it yet, but I'm gonna be breaking down a simple way to create a cinematic sequence so you can transfer these skills into any type of content you'll be creating. So to kick things off, we have pre-production. And how I break that down is asking myself, what is the story we're trying to tell? And what is the method we want to take in order to tell that story? And from there, it's answering those questions in as much detail as possible. So we're trying to tell the story about a girl who's going on a walk in the woods who thinks she's being followed. So all you really need is a girl, the woods, and a great cameraman. Now to make sure that we get this right and we're as efficient as possible, we're gonna storyboard everything. So that as soon as we get to set, we're not trying to think what shots should we get, we're looking at a list of shots in order of what to get. A rule that I like to follow to be as efficient as possible is to have the edit pretty much already done before the camera even switches on. And all that simply means is that the storyboard should be a complete visualization of what you want the final piece to look like. And the final step of pre-production will be establishing the gear that we'll be using. So we're using the Sony FX3 with the Sigma 24-70, Got an ND filter on the front. I'm using the top handle today because I do need to use the XLR input so I can use my Sennheiser MKE 600. And then the gimbal we'll be using is the DJI RS2. That's pretty much it for the gear. I mean, got the A7 IV, uh, road something for the BTS, but no one cares about that kind of stuff. So now that we know how, what, and where we're gonna film, we can actually get into capturing it. So going off the list of the storyboard, I'm gonna be taking it shot by shot. I'm going to be splitting it into handheld shots and gimbal shots just so I'm not going back and forth and wasting time having to constantly break this step up down to go to the gimbal setup. So I just want to speed things up a little bit. So I'm going to be going from handheld shots and then I'll go for the gimbal shots. As I'm not gonna be slowing any of these shots down, I'm gonna keep my frame rate at 24 frames per second. My shutter will be one over 50. I think my aperture is around 2.8 and may go a little bit higher sometimes. ISO is shooting at the base of 800 and I think that's it. So now that we've finished the visual side, I'm gonna be getting a few sound design clips that I can layer on, as well as finding stuff in post, but it's just a bit easier if you know you have things here like right now. So I'll be using my Zoom H5 recorder for this just because you can get audio a lot nicer and it's like omnidirectional. So if something's coming from the right, you'll hear it from the right in post, as opposed to having to do that manually when you're changing it from the different channels. So we'll start off by getting a little bit of just the general room tone, the birds and stuff. Great. I guess you won't be using the Zoom recorder. So to kick things off into the editing stage, I like to dump everything onto the timeline. The good takes, the bad takes, the audio, the B-roll, absolutely everything, just so I can look at it with fresh eyes. Then I'll begin to color code things just so I can start to make it easier when I do start to sift through the footage. So for example, all of my B-roll I've put here in a teal color, the sound design I've put here in orange, and then once I've separated those, I then dive deeper into making the actual edit. So how I began forming this edit was splitting into different scenes. We started off with all the different takes of Annie walking in, into the scene, introducing our subject. Then we had her when she dropped the AirPod. Then we had the bit of her picking up the AirPod and hearing the sound. Then we go into more of the chase scene, all of the running stuff. And then finally the end, her realizing it wasn't actually anything there. So now that I have the solid base of the story, I can then start to cut off the extra fat. And this is where it starts to get quite difficult because you realize you have so many great takes of things, you know, you have so many shots that just look really good, but you can't lose them all. As the saying goes, you have to kill your darlings. So now that the edit is coming together, I will start to layer on the sound design just to make it come to life. So I'll start with the footsteps that I have down here in the orange. I have the music coming in from my headphones in the yellow. I have the general um, sound that I haven't added, but it was actually just part of the clips, still in the green. Um, so you can see here, just the snap of the twig. Um, and again, the same thing on the footsteps. Just slightly changing the audio so you can see the difference from when she's close and when she's far away, but she's still walking on the same leaves is just, you hear the difference, so it actually makes sense when you're watching it. 
And the very last thing I have at the bottom is the room tone. So obviously we're not in a room, but it's just the sound that you can hear consistently throughout all the clips because you don't actually want to hear the difference when you're going from clip to clip. Sometimes you hear that little pop or sometimes you can notice a slight difference. So this is kind of ties everything together because it's what the wood sounds like throughout the day, but it's just having a clean cut of what the actual room sounds like. And then last but not least is the color grade. So for this, I didn't do too much. I wanted to keep it quite natural, just a kind of warm afternoon feeling. And that's exactly what I did. We went from S-Log3 to Rec 709. Then I added in my LUT. You can see it's just a bit too blue, a bit too dark. Um, so I first brightened that up. Then we adjusted the white balance and added in a bit more orange. Just, you know, give it that warm afternoon look. So there really wasn't that much to it. For some of the other shots, I did have to adjust the white balance just to get them all to match. So it all looked like the same time because the sun was coming in and out. I didn't want it to look like it was shot at different times. Which obviously it was, but I just wanted to keep it consistent. And with that being said, here's the final product. So nothing crazy, it was shot in an hour and it's just an example to show you how simple the steps can be made for you to create a cinematic sequence. And in case you haven't been following along, here are the steps that you do need to take. I'll also put them in the description if you want to copy and paste them into a notes page. But that's pretty much it. So if you have got a lesson, laugh or a light bulb moment from this video, I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like down below. And if you think it's nice, you could hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.